everybody, Bob here and welcome back to another Making Stuff video. Today I'm going to continue working on the DIY tracked vehicle. Now if you watched the last video, you'll know that I wound up with one completed track assembly with parts that I made from rubbertrack.com and I was really satisfied with the way that turned out. So off camera, I've been busy, I've created the second track, so now I have two completed track assemblies and I'm ready to continue on with this project. So now I need to work on a frame that I can connect these two assemblies to. This frame is also going to be holding the motor and the platform that I'm going to be standing on while I'm driving the vehicle. Now I can't just weld some square tube in there and call it good. I really need to know where the motor needs to be positioned before I can start working on the frame. Speaking of motors, <laughs> this has been the reason why it's taken me so long to get this second video out. Uh, there seems to be a supply shortage of small engines in the world right now. I guess it's because of all of the supply chain issues. Uh, it took me a while to find one in stock. I really wanted to use a Harbor Freight Predator engine, but there was no Harbor Freight within 300 miles of where I live that had the size engine that I needed in stock. I even went to my local store, talked to the manager there, and he checked and they don't even have them in the warehouse. So it's gonna be a while before you see any of these engines on the shelves in your local Harbor Freight store. Luckily, I found this one on Amazon and I will put a link to it in the description if you wanna check it out for yourself. Now, this one is a Duramax. It is rated at 18 horsepower and 440 cc's. This is about five horsepower more than that Predator engine that I wanted to use. Uh, it also has an electric start. And the main thing that I really, really like about this engine is it's already painted blue and black. So the first thing I need to do is make some type of a mounting plate to put this engine on. I got a piece of steel that I got from the scrapyard that I think will work really great for this project. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to head over here to the computer and the CNC plasma table and get started on a motor mount plate. I'm still not ready to start on the frame because I need to know the exact location where this plate needs to go so that the engine will line up with the sprocket that's going to be on this differential. Now it looks like there's a lot of room in between these two tracks, but there really isn't because the engine will fit in between here, but I need to put the torque converter on the engine and that's going to add about five inches to the overall width. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that torque converter on the motor and then I can come down here and get the exact precise location that I need to put this motor plate so that everything will line up. Here is the torque converter installed on the engine. Let's take a little bit closer look at it. Uh, I got this on Amazon and I will put a link to it in the description for those of you guys that are interested. This is a 40 series torque converter and it's rated for engines up to 18 horsepower and that is what this engine is rated at, 18 horsepower. So this should work quite well with this project. And another thing that I wanna point out is this is a very heavy duty torque converter. Uh, the whole thing weighs at least 20 pounds. This backing plate is quarter inch steel. It's very strong. You're not gonna need any supports with it. And uh, overall, it just appears to be a very well-built uh, torque converter. Now, one thing I did have to do is I had to change the spring out right here. And I had to put, or it comes with the red spring, and I had to put the green spring uh, inside this pulley. Now, the reason for that is 
This engine is a counterclockwise rotating engine and the red spring is made for a clockwise engine and the green spring is made for counterclockwise. So it really, it only took me about three or four minutes to change it out. You just got to remove this snap ring and just, you just swap the springs out. It's very simple. It wasn't really hard to do, but yes, if you're going to use this engine and this torque converter, you do need the green spring in there. And also, this torque converter comes with two different drive sprockets. One is made for a 35 size chain and the other one is made for 41. So I put the 41 on here when I was installing it because I'm going to be using 41 series chain. Okay, so I'm over here on the track assembly and I've got the motor sitting on a transmission jack and I have removed the rubber tracks from the track assemblies because that makes it much easier to move things around and get it positioned for now while I'm trying to do this fit up. And this is with the motor exactly in the center and I've run into an issue. Let me show you this. So here's the problem. You can see right here, this bolt for the pulley on the torque converter, that is going to interfere with the rubber track. And I really don't want to jack the engine up like six inches in the air just so it will clear that rubber track. So I think I'm going to try plan B. All right, and this was plan B and I don't think it's going to work any better than plan A. And the idea was just line up this sprocket with this drive sprocket here. And now this engine is hanging way too far over this way. So I think I'm going to have to go with plan C. And that would be just put everything in the middle and have equal clearance on both sides. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So here is the bolt that's giving me fits right now. This is the bolt on the drive pulley of the torque converter. And you can see it's got a couple of inches clearance on this side. And then here is the engine on the other side. You can see right here, I've got about the same amount of clearance. So yeah, I think that's going to be the way that we do it. Uh, I do need to get some measurements uh, for the height of this because I want the engine to be high enough that it doesn't interfere with the differential or the sprocket here. And I think I'm going to move it. I'm going to raise it up a little bit and move it forward. And that's also going to help with the balance of the whole machine, especially when you've got a 190 pound guy standing on the back of it. So the frame is all welded up and not without some issues. Uh, I do have a few issues going on here, but nothing that can't be fixed. Uh, first of all, you may notice that I've got the front end of the frame jacked up a little bit, and that's because there's no front supports that hold everything together, like these right here and those in the back. And there's a reason for that. I've got some uh, brake calipers coming, and then that's how I'm going to steer this and I need to know where to put the supports because I've got to get them positioned right for the brake calipers. So until those come in, I cannot put those supports on here yet. So to hold everything in place where it needs to be, I've jacked this up a little bit and it's holding uh, all of these where they need to be. 
and that's allowed me to connect the differential onto the frame. Now this differential is kind of the key to how everything is going to work. It's how the vehicle is going to move and it's how it's going to steer. So this may at first glance, it may look like it's just a straight axle, but it's not. Like I said, it's a differential. There's actually some gears inside this gearbox right here. And then that allows it to work like a differential exactly like on your car. So you can see I can turn these in opposite directions. Now, uh, when this was flexed, and it wasn't in the right position. When I tighten these bearings down, this bound up and I wasn't able to actually turn these in opposite directions. So like I said, I've got it jacked up and that's got it close to where it needs to be. But I did also have to make a couple of shims out of some playing cards. And if you remember on the CNC uh, router video, I used playing cards as shims because they're exactly 10 one thousandths of an inch. So I cut some of these out on the Sculpt Fun laser cutter and it has worked great. So as you can see with the shims under here and everything, this in an exactly straight line, this, this all works like it's supposed to. So like I said, this is a differential and this is how it's going to steer. So if I hold this side, like say I apply the brakes here, you can see that this side still turns and it's the same here. If I hold this side, then this side, over here, it still turns. So this is the key to how I'm going to steer and move the track vehicle. And like I said, when I get the calipers, I can put these supports in here and then I won't have to prop this front end up with the jack. So now I need to come up with some way to mount the motor plate onto the frame. Now here was my first idea. I was going to do something like this and then put the motor plate on here because for some reason I thought getting the engine directly over the differential would be the best way to do it. But then I realized if I welded all of this on here, it would be impossible to get the differential in or out. So that idea will not work. So I think what I'm going to do instead is something like this. and then put the motor plate here. And that will move the motor back a little bit and this will also give me access to the Zerk fittings and I can remove the differential. I can completely remove it. I can take the bearings out, replace bearings, and this motor plate will not interfere with it. So I think this is going to be the best way to do this. So I'm going to mock this up right now. And just like that, I have got the motor mount and plate tack welded into place. And I've set the engine on top here just to kind of get an idea of how everything's going to line up and fit. And it all looks pretty good right now. I will point out that with one finger, I can push down and pretty much make this thing nosedive. It is a little front heavy, so I may have to move the engine back a little bit. But of course, right now, the tracks are not on here. I also haven't put the platform on the back that I'm going to stand on. And plus I weigh a whole lot more than this engine. So hopefully that will all balance out and that won't be an issue. So I really like how this project's coming along. It's starting to look like a uh, track vehicle to me. And uh, I really think this engine might be a little bit too big for this project, but let me know what you guys think down in the comments. I still read all the comments and I'd love to hear from you guys. Uh, also remember, I've got links to all of the parts I've used in this project so far over on the Making Stuff webpage. So there's a link to that down in the description of the video. So check that out if you're interested in making one of these for yourself. And if you like the video, please give me that big thumbs up. That lets me know what types of videos you guys like to see. And if you aren't a subscriber, please consider hitting that subscribe button and ringing that bell so you don't miss any upcoming Making Stuff videos. And thanks for watching.